last time we spoke, I was trying to go for 2300 I think. Last time we get there. Uh, so 20, 20, 2294 I believe. If I misspoke, please forgive me. No problem. Who the fuck let me know? I'm not, I'm not that guy, bro. I would never, I would go for 2294 no, no, no. But when we were talking last time, I was trying to go for 2300 I believe. I didn't to go. And... Let's see. When did we last? When did we last we interview? I don't know. I don't know the date. It was like three months ago, My close to three months. Twenty three hundred total was in twenty twenty three though. So maybe I already did it. Maybe I already did it. Then the second one, I signed up for a second twenty three hundred, and I got another twenty three hundred. Now I have three twenty three hundred totals, which is just goat status. Mm -hmm. Goat status times like three. But it's all good, man. Well, I just know. You know me, camera's already going. I don't do intros or anything. Is this thing on already? Oh, yeah, it's already on. Beautiful. Let me do this real quick because I got to promote the gym now when I do the interviews, which is fine. I want to take this time and say thank you to World's Gym for allowing me to use this facility to in group interview yet another, another great uh, power lifter. They don't know you're here, though, bro. Huh? They don't know you're here. Uh, hey, man, still got to promote him, bro. Still, still got to promote him. At adorable. the end of the day, World's Gym, best gym in the world. I just got done doing a heavy bench. That's why my energy is gone. Other than that, Zebulon, thank you for coming back. To Zebulon my has some respect, bro. If you can't pronounce it, just go by Z. Now, okay, respect, respect on the name. Thank you for coming awesome. back to my channel. Dope, bro. I just been a long time coming. I'm there was Steve, a lot of things. How much did you wanted this entire interview? Bro. Oh, just like this. No, it's just Rachel glasses on, bro. bro. But there, there was a lot of jewels that you dropped last time. There was mm -hmm. a lot of, and there's been a lot of accolades that you mm -hmm. just reached. So I like to cover that in this channel mm -hmm. uh, as a returning guest. So the floor is yours. Beautiful. So last time we spoke. Um, I think I did. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember the time frame, but I know the last time we spoke, I uh, had one twenty three hundred pound total. And for those people that don't know, because the, the the hope is that everyone that jumps into your channel, jumps into your your, your view, your, your video, whatever the case may be, and hopefully it goes on Instagram as well. People that jump in are not going to be hit to power, again. and that's the beautiful thing about. It. That's what you want. You don't want just because here's the thing, right? Power is this big. Gen GP general population is much bigger. So. In my opinion, when it comes to me saying 2300, the, the, the common man or woman has no idea what the fuck that even means, right? So, as it relates to total, um, the last time we spoke, I had a 2300 pound total. What that means in layperson's terms is a lot of weight. Well, that's a, a 2300 total is roughly an 800 plus squat, an 800 plus deadlift, and a 500 plus bench. It's roughly what, what it is a high 800 squat, like a high 880, 880 deadlift, and a 530, 540 bench. So last we spoke, that was my was my tenure. That my tenure in power was about two years at that time, and it hasn't been that long. It's now two and a half years, closer to three years. So at that time, one twenty two pound total, which put me in the top twenty of all time ever in power. Team. Keep in mind there are people say there are hundreds of thousands of people on the database which is open power thing, but there's millions of people that can be power thing, right? So out of the millions of power things, I've done something that only twenty people in this sport have done. Um, Ever, ever, with just knee sleeves and um, a belt. And and for me, that was always the goal. My goal is always exclusivity. Meaning, when I go for a girl, I want a girl that not a lot of guys have had. When it comes to a business venture, I want a business venture not to run it in. When it comes to accolades, I want to achieve accolades that the 1% have achieved. So when it comes to powerlifting, top 20 out of millions of people have achieved this, this goal, that was my goal. That's just me. I'm kind of a an, an extremist in that way. So I did that. And ever since you spoke last time, my goal was just to make 2300. Want me to shut up? No, my phone's shut down. I was trying to make sure my shit was going. Anyway, I'm listening. I'm taking this in. No, but, but um, the goal after that was okay, how. You know, I always relate things to other stuff. But the, uh, the, the goal after that, after my first 2300 total, was how. How much of this is. Um, Duplicable. How often can I duplicate this over and over again? How many times can I achieve this one percent type of thing, right? And can I can I repeat it? I knew I could, but I said this when I first got the power. My first total was twenty one hundred, which is very very elite. But I told my coach even the first day I, I competed, I said I didn't think one of the best, if not the best. So 2300, I was like, okay, cool. That should be my ceiling, which is crazy as shit because it's a 1% thing. It's, it's, it's like someone saying, you know, 1% of the population are, are millionaires, right? Multi-millionaires. It's like a person making their first million and saying, you know what? 
um, can I duplicate this every single year? But on top of that, can I add to it? So when I got 2800 done, when we first spoke, okay, I sat back and it was very, very, uh, it was a week after we spoke, I'd had a competition. Cause I don't remember we, we spoke and maybe a week or two after I had a competition. And yeah, because it was in Virginia. It was in- uh, I Remember that live, nobody can tell you shit. In Virginia <laughs> Beach, yeah, so. So I left and my goal was to achieve 2,800 again. And I did it, relatively easy. It wasn't hard, wasn't tough, didn't drain me. And then I said, okay, one more time. I just wanna show and prove to myself that this is doable, duplicable, and repeatable, that's a word. And I did that again, and I did 2,800 at national. And mind you, this, right? When you go into competition, when you get into uh, powerlifting in a, in a, at a high level, the goal is just to win competitions, right? So I went to nationals in Niagara Falls, and I knew what I had to do to win, but I also had a personal goal. So, <laughs> be sure you ask a question after this because I could go all day. But, um, That's what I'm on, but I got you. so at, at, at Nationals, here's what it was, right? There was so many great powerlifts. I think like upwards of 400, 500 people at Nationals, right? So, um, powerlifters, powerlifters, yeah. Oh power, 400, athletes, I believe. And so, so um, there was a guy that totaled a certain dot score. Dots, for those that don't know, is a coefficient some fucking arbitrary bullshit ass uh, equation that tests a person's body weight versus the weight they lift and this equation comes up, right? So this guy, just an arbitrary number, you won't know nothing about it, this guy had a 540 dot score. He had a 2,000 pound plus total. And he was significantly lighter than me. He was 235, 237 pounds. I'm 310 up today, 311. So I have to do much more to achieve a higher dot score. Long story short, I achieved a 570 dot score, which is this, like I said, arbitrary equation of body weight versus weight you lifted. So for me to achieve that, I knew I had to get 2250 or greater as far as the total. Um, just to win the competition, win the little $1,500 and uh, a, a nice statue, whatever it can be, and title as national champion, right? Um, but 2250 um, was a regress for me. And I'm like, I don't want to get 2250. And people kept asking me out backstage and warming up, I said, what's your goal? I was gonna lie, I said, I only have the 2050 to win, but I want 2,300. And people think that's the arbitrary number. Why, just do 2050? My goal is to show that I can, I can do this shit three times. 2,300 pound total. Long story short, got 2,300 pound total. Third 2,300 pound total ever for me. And um, now I'm back to the drawing board. Today I squatted and, um, what would it be, three weeks, three weeks after Nationals maybe? I'm just trying to get back in the groove of lifting. The last thing to feel good after a competition for me is squats. I pulled 826 for a double recently, um, three days ago. I, I benched 500 pretty quickly, easily, a few days ago, maybe a week ago. I haven't gone above 700 on squat yet. My best squat is up to 900 pounds. So squat for me is something that, that, that really, because your knees get hot, man, spicy. Because it's very, very hard to recover from. The, the hardest lift people think is deadlift. Deadlift is hard, but a, it's, it's a close second to squat. Squat is so taxing on the body, your knees, so many joints are in that line of movement. So yeah, that that's 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 where I'm at, that's what I'm doing. Zebulon, what's your next goal? Glad you asked, RJ. Um, <clears throat> no, my next goal is gonna be now um, building to a higher 20 dollars total. Because here's the thing, right? You're gonna compete, and you're gonna get a total. Let's just go ahead and number out there. Let's say your first total is 1,500. 500, 500, 500, right? Which is not gonna be the goal. You're probably 1,700 or close to 1,800. Let's say your first total is 1,700, 1,750. What you're gonna realize, the stronger you get, the heavier these weights get. Shocking, right? Of course, it's because the stronger you get, the stronger you get. The, the more weight you put on the bar, the more plates you're loading onto a squat, meet your deadlift, and you realize, fuck, man, edging out another 10 pounds is everything. So for me, I'm turning 30 this year. I know you're there, you're old as shit. I'm not yet, let me have my you. But um, you're 32, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, Lord, anyway, must be old, must be nice, must be horrible. But anyway, long story short, my goal is this, man. Um, universally and generically, and generally, people say, you know, um, your 30s are usually the strongest you're gonna be. So for me, I'm 29. I need to scrap, I need, if I'm gonna make a run to 2400, because keep in mind, 20 people have done 2300, 20 pe 27 people I think, I'm number 20. 27 guys have achieved 2300. About four or five guys, four to six guys have achieved 2400. 
So a 100 pound difference has narrowed the field from 30 people to five to six people, which is mind bowl blowing and mind boggling. So when, and the mind is this, it's all a mindset for me. You have never walked to here and I have not been a confident, loud son of a gun. And it's, it's just because when we talk, we converse, it's a mindset bro. And people really do not like, I just, I just post on my social media, people do not like champions knowing they're champions. People love quiet champions. But the reality of the fact is this, and I'll read this one after the fact. The reality of the fact that there's no as a quiet champion. That champion is loud internally or externally. Mike Tyson said it out loud. Muhammad Ali said it out loud. Kobe said it out loud. LeBron said it, says it out loud. Fucking Jordan, every single fucking champion that you've ever run into, their confidence is not quiet. Confidence is like a fucking fire that has a hose of gasoline running to it. It's the, the, the fire is never small. So because a person is able to internalize that and not really speak about, oh, I like that confidence, but that confidence doesn't offend me. The reality of it is it's not a quiet confidence. It's an internal confidence. So because my confidence is external, just like anyone that's, that, that's good at something and they're externally confident, people don't like it. But for me, that's important because I need to hear myself, tell myself that I can do so I'm going to accomplish this. And I've put this out into the, into, into the world many times that I'm going for 21 pound total. I did it and people shut the fuck up. When I got 20, 20 pound total, when I said I'm going to do it, did it, people shut the fuck up. And that's the goal of everything in life. This is a microcosm of life and reality. I know you're going to ask the question eventually of what got some power from what sports did you play. So I'll leave that for you. I'll wait. But um, what you're going to find is at the end of the day, you're in for a good one, dude. Oh, cool. I'm not going to say that, but what you're going to find is this, man. It's just all these things. Everything. I could go, man. You got to stop giving me on this thing because I'll talk all fucking day. But here's the image. It's very clear. It makes it very fucking clear. Um, everything relates from this or to this in some kind of way. What is training? What is training? Um, I might have to say this for the last part, but I'm going to say it. Okay. What is training? Training is this, right? What is your goal with squat, bench, or deadlift? What's your goal? You got a number goal? No, I don't. You don't have a number goal. Your dumb ass doesn't have a goal as far as what you want to hit. As far as a fucking deadlift. What do you want to deadlift? What's, what's your deadlift right now? Uh, 529. 520. What do you want? I don't know. That's a problem. I don't know. So that's leads into that's my question. That's a massive that problem that I have for you real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> so I know, and I believe it because the, you kind of spoke on the confidence thing, but so you're way past the 2300 ceiling. So I recall in our last interview, mm -hmm. right, you said you're going to give us a decade of hell. So right now you're two years mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, do you plan, which I, I know the answer, mm -hmm. but for my audience, do you plan on surpassing that 2400 ceiling? Um, I, I know what's going to have to happen for me to do that, right? And mm -hmm. just full transparency, I'll have to get a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Currently, green and 10, 350 pounds. I think it's 340, 340, 30, 340. Um, because the reality of it is, Weight moves weight, mass moves mass, right? And for me, I'm a big dude. You're a big guy, but there's a difference between 280 and 310. There's a difference as to what our bodies can take. Now, just off, just just based on reality, on on simple geometry and physics, um, if a baby gets hit by a 10,000 pound car going 40 miles per hour versus a man that's 300 pounds getting hit by a 10,000 pound car at 40 miles per hour. That man has a proclivity of surviving far beyond that baby because the baby is just not, it's not the, 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 the baby doesn't have the structure, the size, the bone density, all these things. Usually when you get bigger, your bone density grows, your muscle density, all these things, right? So as it relates to what I need to do, what I want to do, I have to gain a certain amount of weight. Um, will I try to go past 24? That's a very good that I've never gotten. No, no, not, not by a long shot. 24 is very, very elite. And I... I want to be in the number of people that have done something very elite, right? Do I, and, and I'm, re, re, I'm, I'm, I'm realistic. The best raw total in just leaves is 25 something. I don't think that's in my cards. And if it is, I don't want to go to the place that I have to go to to achieve that. I'm 29. I want to do a few things before I'm 35, 40. I want to make babies <laughs> and raise hell and, 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 and other facets of life. So for me, pouting is great. But it's 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 a um, it's a tool. After a certain point, now at a certain point, I just want to use it as that tool. Right now, the tool is to literally give people hell in this sport of powerlifting. As time goes on, it's to give people hell in other facets of my life. So, twenty four hundred. Once that's achieved, 
I don't think I'll push far beyond that. 2420, 2450, that might happen, but am I gonna run towards 2500? Not the same way I'm running towards 2400. Make sense? It does. Now, I will answer your question. The reason why I never set any goals for myself when it came to the squat, the bench, or the deadlift, even the numbers I never hit, I never actually saw myself hitting those numbers mm -hmm. before. So I, I don't know. That's, and I know, I know that's bad. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to, when I do get on that platform, I just want to get on the platform and say that I'm a pilot, brother. That's it. That's cute. Oh, Lord. That's cute. So what you're telling me is um, you just want to be a participant in life. Mm -hmm. I, I advise no one to do that, right? In um, power thing or in general? Period. Okay. I'm going I'm to connect this to, to life, and I do this a lot with, with you, but... This is a, a microcosm of life, right? In this sport, you're either participating or you're leading the pack. Now, the ones that lead the pack are not just, not just one guy, it's five, 10, 20 guys and girls that are leading the charge. You say, oh my God, I'm that, this guy, that guy, this girl, that girl. Because there are so many people leading the pack in this sport, either you're gonna be one of people that are leading the pack or you're gonna be in a participant and you're gonna participate in trouble. <laughs> I advise you, if you're gonna do anything, um, be one of the best at that something because it's going to coalesce in your real life. And and if you're a lack of days of co you, you don't want to ever develop a lack of days of personality. Now I have siblings that have this. And I want to smack them because I need to understand that this is just not the way to live. Because at the end of the day, when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, you have to look back on why you have the outcomes that you have in this life and what it's going to return to is your attitude, your personality. Not necessarily your personality, but your attitude and your belief in yourself. If it's a limited belief, then you're, you're, you're limited by such a margin that the results you don't get, you can't be upset with anyone else other than yourself. So for me, and I just said this on social media, um, I said that to say it to you here as well, but the, 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 the champions, the LeBrons, the, the Mike's choose yours, whether it's Mike Tyson, Mike Jordan, or Michael Jackson, these sons of guns believed in themselves before anyone else did. Michael Jackson believed at some point in his life when he was very young that he was going to be the best fucking performer in the world that's ever lived, that we've ever seen. And keep in mind, during Michael Jackson's time coming up, there was a fucking guy by the name of James fucking Brown who was already doing the shit at such a high level. So Michael Jackson had to believe that James Brown is incredible and it's one of his influences, but I can be better than him. And he did. He became better than him. By Michael Jackson died before he hit 50. James Brown believe died in his, in maybe in his 60s or 70s. But Michael Jackson fucking eclipsed the sun line. And they're both incredible artists. Jordan, Tyson, fucking uh, LeBron, uh, 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 Kobe. There has to be a belief that nothing has ever existed. That fucking stool you're sitting on, that tattoo is on your fucking leg, the thought existed before the thing. It's just reality. The thought existed far before the thing. So if you're going to achieve any substantive and substantial and great and massive and huge, the thought, you're going to be black shit crazy in your head. And don't let it ever come out. People say, oh my God, that's crazy. When I start telling people I'm going to be the best, when as it relates to power, it's just a small field. Oh, you're cocky, you're arrogant. No, motherfucker, I know what I know that I know. I know who I am. So, yeah. Allow me to ask this question as well. I say what we got to is the vegetables, so this is the potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, you're traveling, so of uh, the... the the gyms that you've been to in your travels, mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's inspiring. I like to see mm -hmm. it. Um, inspirational, all that other jazz. Mm -hmm. In your travels to the many mm -hmm. gyms that you've been to. Hardest um, question ever. I know it's coming. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, no. We're not going to get to that. But ah, but we'll see what this question is. The knowledge that you've gotten. Okay. From, from, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. Go the, ahead. The, the knowledge that you've got, And the reason why I ask. I've only been to South Carolina, Virginia, still stayed within relative, but mm -hmm. I've learned some things in other powerlifting gyms mm -hmm. since I've gone. And, and, and I, Your and shoes I, don't match, by the way, but go ahead. I've learned some things <laughs> in the other gyms that I've gone to, uh -huh. and with this short amount, I, I've applied them, and, and, and I feel like they've helped. So with that, if, if I got that being local, you've been all around. Was it similar for you in Man, your travels? We're in North Carolina. We're, we're in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Where is Virginia Beach related to this? How far? Three hours? Two and a half four, hours, four, four hours. hours. Mm -hmm. You're robbed the road from someone that is that I admire highly, mm -hmm. highly at Flex Gym. Um, dude is knowledgeable as shit. And um, it just goes to show the importance of getting outside your comfort zone. You're in the army. Have you ever been outside of this country? Yeah, but it's only for missions. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Only for missions, right? 
What does it do for your belief in your country? It builds it. It grows it. It, 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 it. In some way, it it allows you to understand why we do what we do. When you stay in your comfort zone, nothing grows there, right? So what it does for me as far as travel, now I'm, I'm, we've talked about this. I'm, I'm about to be done with that in the next mm-hmm. maybe about two or three weeks. Um, but what that does for me, you're, the, the words you use are very, very uh, accurate. It's knowledge. It's gain that I get. I've sat across and with and talked to and broke bread with some of the best pilots in, in, in the world just by traveling, by happenstance. I got to train with some of the best influencers. I got to train with one of the first influencers, bro, as it relates to, 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 to bodybuilding. And the, it's, it's not your Chris Bumstead, it's not your Trend Twins, which I love all these guys, but the, the first of the first as it relates to content creators are your Rich Pianas, I don't even know that it is, your Michael Hearns, your fucking uh, Mark Lobliners, the Hosh Twins, you don't even know these guys because they're doing this for such a long time. These are the pioneers. I got to sit across from a Michael Hearn and, and train with this motherfucker for a few a weekend, bro. This dude is so knowledgeable. Just looking at, I don't have to talk to the guy. Watching how Michael Hearn trains is everything. So that's what it's knowledge, it's games, it's experience. When you get that, listen, bro. Because all day, look, it's very clear. My father's seventy-five years old. You know what the fuck I get from a seventy-five-year-old dude? You know what what knowledge I get from someone. I'm 29, going on 30, he's 75. You're looking at, and my math is not that great, you're looking at 105 years of experience combined with, our, with, with what we said talking about. My grandmother died at 101. So at the 100, you're looking at 206 years of knowledge that I'm able to gain from my father, who got it from his mother, who died at 101, me, who's dirty, who's traveled, because everybody's experience is different. My grandmother's different than my father. My father's different than me. So that combined age is 200 plus years. It's the same with powerlifting. You travel across this fucking country. And by the way, America, bar none, powerlifting is universal. It is international. America, we're very lucky. We're very good at most things. We are the most competitive country as it relates to power. We have the strongest people that ever existed. If there's a dozen people that, that's the strongest in the world, 70% are in America, are from America, right? 75, 80% of them. So I got lucky. It's my job to travel. It's my job to drop into gyms and say, hey, bitch, I'm here. And I've been able to do that. And most champions and, 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 and influential powerlifters and strong people, let me tell them, bro. And I can go all day. Ready? When you walk into a room, what are you, black? Yeah. Cool. You walk into a room, just be real with yourself. We love the cockroaches. Caucasian, we love them, right? If there are five black guys here, five white guys here, what corner are you going to first? The black corner. Not because we discriminate, it's just, it, the reality of it, we tend to, as people, migrate with what we are, who we are, and what we align with and or believe that we align with, right? When it comes to power, the same thing. There's a head nod when it comes to someone they know pulls 90 pounds. When, listen, I don't have a lot of followers. I don't have a lot of followers. What I fucking do have, you look at my fucking name on Instagram, I'm on a social, I'm, I'm, I'm open powerlifting, on the database of powerlifting, you'll see my name before you scroll. Zebulon Drake, I know that motherfucker. That's one of the strongest humans as far as powerlifting ever has ever been. So there, when I go into these corners, spit on you, my bad, sorry. When I go into these corners and I see a bunch of powerlifts, a Shane fucking Hunt, a Death Grip Derek, people you don't know nothing about, they're, they may not know me. But what they'll say is, oh fuck, I fucking, I may not have met this guy, but I fucking know you. I know the fuck, I've had, I've had that so many times. I do not have a massive social media. What I do have is credibility. I'm that motherfucker. Sorry, you ain't got like it, but I'm that, I'm that motherfucker, I just am. Not because I say so, but because I've done so. This has not, I just happened to have picked the right mommy and the right daddy. They came together and popped out, Zebulon came out, right? So the reality of it is, we migrate to people like unto us or similar to us. So when I go into a room and there's 12 guys there, some guys, I'm not a better person than anyone when it comes to because of the fact that I power it. I'll say it again. I'm not better than anyone when it relates to human ability and, and, and my fellow man and woman. But I'm a much better power lifter by a long shot. So when that happens and I'm around other great power lifters, they migrate to me or I migrate to them. When they find out, holy shit, what makes this guy better than the rest of people, they don't realize something that, oh my God, we have a similar mindset. 
I don't remember your question, but I do. It's about the traveling stuff. So when I go to Virginia Beach, there's some I just there's some I talk to everybody. I love everybody. But there are only certain people I can advise from. There's only certain and the fact of the matter is, you you never see me in a positive environment. I try to tell people all the time, social media is not real life. Mm-hmm. Social media is not real life. You can't speak on this, but I will. Because you're in the military, you're active, you're currently in the military, I'll say it. Social media told us that Biden was on his shit. Don't laugh, it's your commander in chief. Social media told us Biden was on his shit. He's smart as hell, he is a dynamo. Biden is the shit. He doesn't have dementia, he is on top of it. He can do backflips and push-ups and Rubik's Cube, all this stuff. Got on the damn debate stage and couldn't say a word. Mm. Couldn't speak. Stumbled over himself. Made, it was very embarrassing. It was sad even. Social media and the internet is not real. Reality set in and we realized, holy shit, this guy has dementia. Holy shit, this, this, is a, this is an old man. It's not an age thing. My grandfather was 90 something. He looked great. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? It was so embarrassing. Social media. Dog, internet is not real life. It's just not real life, dog. It's not real life. It's just not. And then it's the same with ability. I'm sorry, bro. You know it just like I do. The plan is your commander in chief. It's your commander in chief. So I am, I am, I used to be in the military. I'm not anymore. I can, I'm free, motherfucker. I can say it. The reality of it is. Reality is reality, internet is internet. So, when people, how I am, as you can, as you can tell, what, what was it, been an hour yet? 30 minutes? Look, it's been 30 minutes, right? That's another question I got. You can answer it, I'm gonna answer it, but here's the thing. In 30 minutes, here's what I'll tell you. What you'll look, I have not taken a breath yet. I have not inhaled yet. Why? Because there are people that God has given a gift to, and there are people God has given gifts to. Obama. Pause, I love politics, so forgive me. Obama, I don't study that much, but I know people. God has given Obama multiple gifts. This motherfucker walks into a room, and his he has the, the walk of a Denzel, and he has the fucking, the mannerisms and the ability, the vernacular to do this. He's, a, he's an orator. Like, Obama's ability to speak was everything. Like, Obama could fucking make you do something you had no business doing or wanting to do just by talking to you. And there are certain people that God gives an ability to. There are so many powers that are fucking phenomenal athletes. When it comes to this, when it comes to speaking, when it comes to being an orator, they cannot build belief in anyone other than watching them. I'm the person that, and I'm just a real person, I'm just honest, bro. Like when I speak, the angels sing, bro. The angels sing. Pants get wet. Ask the girls. But, I'm just kidding. But the reality of it is, I think there are people that have a gift and there are people that have gifts, right? And when you have a gift, in my opinion, as it relates to uh, powerlifting, you have a duty to expose that gift. No homo. But um, I think the kids say, I think the kids, I think the kids, I think the kids say no diddy now, whatever. Yeah, they do. Okay. But when it comes to that, so so to tie back to traveling, bro, there are so many people, no no homo, no diddy, that have exposed their gift to me. <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> And their gift happens to be their ability to be strong. I've gotten so many fucking gems from, from, from people that have no business getting gems from. I got to sit on people that have that no business getting these gems from, but I've gotten them. Because I've gotten them, I have to give them back out. So that's how I feel. Traveling has been an absolute blessing. So the meats, no mm-hmm. homo, no diddy. Um, this is something, I do watch your lives as long as I can. Um, this is a particular question I have, and it does lead to the federations. Mm-hmm. So, w- would I be right in saying that there is a disdain that you have for the re- federations? And, and if it is or isn't, here's why I ask. Was there a bad run-in that you had to where you feel so strongly? Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know all the federations, but I, I know you, when you get on the lives and you speak about the federation, your messages, to me, they're powerful. They get but a little personal, don't they? They do. So, 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 so with that being said... Do I have beef with the Federation? Or no? Yes. The question is, the answer is absolutely yes. Okay. And I have beef with the Federation. It doesn't have to be personal. Um, you don't have to do shit to me, but they have. But, and I won't speak on that too much because, well, there could be litigation going on. There could be active lawsuits, but I don't think that too much. Okay. What I will say is this. Um, when you, and this is this is something I'm very passionate about. I, I can't fucking stand bullies. 
I can't stand bullies in people. I can't stand bullies in organizations. I can't stand people who think they're bigger than other people and they belittle those people. They disrespect those people. It's different if you're related to relation. Domestic issues are domestic issues. Two people living in a household, married, whatever, those issues are gonna exist. But when you're a bully to your constituency, when you degrade, disrespect, and belittle and or do, look, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What that means is what you do to one, you have to do to the other, right? That's just the reality of life. The reason I don't like a certain federation or have a, 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 a disdain for them is because the way they treat one person is not the way they treat another person. I have situation after situation, instance after instance, where someone has been accused of something and the federation treats this person differently, whether it be the color of their skin, the thing they have swing between their legs or their affiliation with the higher ups, and they choose to treat another person differently, rather be because of their genitalia, the color of their skin, or because they're not the in crowd. I can't stand that. So I have a fucking real issue with that. And when I have an issue with that, if you have an issue with me, I don't give a fuck. You can't do shit to me. But what I am gonna do is with my platform. And with my reach and my credibility, I'm going to let it be known that you're a shit federation because of how you mistreat people. Let me be very clear. You don't have to say a damn thing to a person to mistreat them. If you treat one person different than the other, that is discrimination. I can't help that I'm from Mississippi, the last state to abolish slavery officially in 2013, I believe, or 2016, a Mississippi officially abolished slavery. Look it up. Mississippi officially abolished slavery in 2013, I believe. Legally. I come from a place where I've seen fucking discrimination at its greatest and most disgusting. So when I have that in an organization that's supposed to be equal opportunity, you're going to get some shit from me. You're going to get a stern talk from me, and I'm not going to be your friend. Now, I met the vice president of the federation. I met, I met these people that run massive, massive competition in the federation, and they told me, hey, man, we like you. We have no problem with you. We're sorry this happened. That happened. And I'm like, personally, with you, I have no issue with you. With what y'all are doing and how y'all are doing, I have a massive fucking issue. Because all it does is this. It's a snowball rolling down the hill and it's just growing. When you do shit like this, it perpetually creates more shit. So they're just, it's just, there are certain fairs that are just shit balls rolling down a shit infested hill and it becomes more shit. So um, allow me to touch on this and then I'll move it. Um, Not touching the goddamn thing. No diddy, bro. You're you right. Anyway, <laughs> with, 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 with everything that you just said, uh -huh. has it, has it, hindered or put obstacles in places for powerlifters when they compete on the platform with that said federation? I'm asking. 100%. Okay. 100%. If there's discrimination mm -hmm. on how people equally distinguish how they're going to treat a person through a judicial system or through a system of um, checks and balances, when it comes to competition, you're going to treat that person differently because understand, power competitors are not, not, not this big, they're this big. So when you choose to mistreat a person, you see that person on your platform, you're not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. You're not going to help them out. You're going to, you're going to give them some type of um, reprimand, whether it be a red light or whatever the case may be, because you don't like how they treated your federation, whatever the case may be. So this is why, this is why power can't grow, untested power that on drugs. This is why it can't grow, because there are too many egos in it. There are too many girls and guys that think they're better than the than the, than the other person that's on a platform trying to contribute in that sport. The reality of it is that the reason people do not like Zebulon, some people don't, most people do. The reason they don't, because I'm very fucking good at this thing. I'm very, very good. I just am, bro. I'm very fucking good. And it's not because I say so. It's because I've done so. And when you're really fucking good, and you do not kowtow to the powers that be, when you tell them to suck my taint, they don't like you. Not the taint. Really? The taint. Look, I, I go either which way. We can go, we can go balls, we can go pole, right? But suck the fuck out my taint because you have no business discriminating against people. And we live in a time where people think social media is reality, and that is so damn dangerous right now. And you're creating a situation. Listen, it's very clear. The less people that are able to compete at a high level, it only takes away from whatever they're competing in. When there are less people competing at a high level in basketball, it takes from basketball. If there was discrimination against LeBron, basketball would suffer. If there's discrimination against a fucking, name a, name, name a great athlete. A Michael Phelps in swimming, the Olympics would suffer. McGregor, John McGregor, Jones. It could go yeah. over and over and over. With their discrimination against people that are good at something, the sport suffers. The person won't suffer that much because they're still 
the product. They can go to any place and, and, and make money and do well. But the sport suffers. So powerlifting is this big clique of dickheads mm -hmm. that think they know better than their constituency, than the people they serve, and they treat people. They treat some of the best at let me take some payroll. What you realize is this. People that are very good at something, it's a genetic thing, right? I'm great because the right mom and dad can make it. It has nothing to do with me other than I work very hard. But those people that are very good at high level tend to think a little different. They're hard to be around, deal with, and grow with. Mike Tyson, I don't think he's married to this day. He's down near six. I don't think he's married. He has multiple he baby mothers. He might have a girlfriend. He has multiple baby mothers. But I don't think he's married. It's very hard to deal with a winner in any facet of life, man or woman, because they think differently. They move differently. They act differently. They associate differently. So for me, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying in short is when you meet people, when you find people in an organization, situation, or sport that's really, really elite, the reality of it is they can be kind humans, but they're going to be hard to, to mesh with. So when people, this is why you, can, you cannot have people. The best person to ever own a, a basketball team, in my opinion, would be a Jordan. Jordan knows basketball players. Jordan's not gonna get offended if, if, they, if, they, if, they, if a good player is a good player and acts like one on the scene and off the scene. Is what it is. Um, so, you know, it's very, very hard to critique a person when you have never been that person. So, um, and it's just jealousy, man. Uh, when, when, when it comes to me and my, my disdain for certain federations because the jealousy is obvious. Look, man, I, I look, they can see me. I am six foot two gorgeous as shit. Can't help it. I'm stunning, right? Objectively so. You know, when a woman makes it in her mind, her Prince Charming is tall, dark, handsome, tall, dark, gorgeous. And I'm decently strong, decently confident. I, I, I have the gift of gab. I can't help that because it was given to me by my grandfather, my father, and so on and so forth. And I read a hefty amount. So when it comes to that, people aren't going to like confident people and people that don't back down. I do not take a backward step. When you come to me, I'm going to come toward you. So no diddy. Um, but um, I'm not coming toward you. Relax. But um, how this works is I'm okay with the – I'm okay with people – listen. I just talk so much. I'm okay with people feeling a certain way toward me. Just be ready for me to feel and act a certain way toward you. You know, so that's that's the answer. The reason why I, why I wanted to touch on that, so from my mm -hmm. assessment, and, and regardless, this is how I see it, but it's just kind of like one man versus an army type thing. It's beautiful. And it, yeah, but it, I will say this, the, the, it's not really a question, but just something I wanted to pose. It was kind of like, with everything that you just mentioned, with what you've had to face and others may have to face, Would it matter as long as we cannot take away from what you or anybody else that has dealt with that, with what they've lifted, strength to strength at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. So it, my, I guess what I want to present to that is, is would they still deal with that regardless? It, it, three dots across the board, would they still run into that? Because, I mean, I may dislike you, but who still runs that? You said what? But who still runs? To, to the people that are getting bullied or, or attacked yeah. or whatever by these federations, mm -hmm. if they still perform and, 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 and it's, they, they did all what they needed to do as, you know, mm -hmm. as far as the business squad, the deadlift, would they still run into that type of discrimination or, or yeah. still would? People do people shit. Okay. And people shit happens to people. The, the, the people shit that you don't want to deal with is discrimination, hatred, vitriol, and just disgusting habits, right? Um, people do people shit. I don't get upset with it. I, I don't go. I, I don't. I don't rage out when a person says, "Oh my God, a guy said something bad." My little man. The only thing I get pissed off is when you, when you purposely prohibit a person's ability to grow. Okay. Right. When you do that, it's a problem for me, and I get upset. Um, but to answer your question, um, will bullies still be bullied even though they're called out for their bullying? That's pretty much your question. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna do it. People are gonna have to deal with that. And. Um, I'm not here to tear down any federation, believe it or not, even though it's sound banana. My goal is to grow every single federation. At the end of the day, a federation's job is to provide a platform for athletes. I'm tired of people saying they're for a certain group of people, or whatever the case may be, but not proving it. Lip service is nothing. It means absolutely nothing. What Actions. are you doing? What are you doing? Exactly. 
So when it comes to saying, we're the best federation we'll live to, two ways you prove this. Money and money. Pay out the lifter, number one. Pay out money, number one. Number two, if there's any amount of discrimination, whether it's Zebulon or someone else, someone's gonna call it out. I have no problem calling it out. Because at the end of the day, I'm a very flawed human being. But one thing no one can ever say about me is that I own a business, run a business, or sell a product and I discriminate against certain people. It's disgusting. When people do that, they have no business being involved in the business of helping others because you're choosing what others you're helping mm -hmm. and you're going to other the people you don't. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So in, in closing, because I know you got shit to do. We all do. <laughs> it's 637, so we're fine. What are some things you like about powerlifting and what are some things you dislike about it? So, so I think you just touched on it. The thing I don't, is, I think I don't like about powerlifting is um, every, everything has this. Is the uh, I, I hate group thinking. And what that is is simply groupthink is the opposite of critical thinking. Critical thinking says, you know, let me step outside my comfort zone. Let me think about this critically. Let me think about this as a whole, uh, holistically. Groupthink says, don't. Groupthink says, hey, look, this is what I say. And you got to believe what I say because of the very fact that I said it. Or and, else. Or else. And, and the fact of the matter is you're qualified for believing it because I said it. So when you have people with massive platform, I tell people, I always use Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, as an example. Um, no one knows who The Rock is beefing with. Is The Rock beefing with certain people? He, he's beefing with people. You have no idea. He'll never post about it. he never talk about it. because Unless it's fucking WWE, right? It's, 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 that's the goal. The reason he doesn't do it because when, when you earn a platform, when you earn a stage, you respect that stage and that platform. Um, the thing I don't like about powerlifting is certain federations do not respect the platform they have been given. And... Um, because it's still ran and handled by young men and women with egos. They want to pick and choose their champions. Listen, bro, at the end of the day, there's this, there's this site, the, uh, the, the, there, there's this every year Open Power, which is the platform that posts all our lists throughout the entire, every federation in the, in the entire world. At the end of the day, the only thing I care about, the only, the, 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 the credibility I need Validation I need comes from the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Mm. So the end of the year, open power and shows that I've done. I don't need you to say I like you, I love you, I care about you, I follow you, said everyone. Couldn't give a shit less. So that's one thing I hate about power. The, 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 the group think and the clicks within the sport of power is disgusting because you only hurt the other lifter. The lifter you're choosing to other. The lifter you're choosing to ostracize. Disgusting. Can't stand it. What I love about do you guys what I love about too? Yeah, what do you like and what do you What I like about it is going to be um the camaraderie that happens naturally. Um, you've been in boot camp. I've been in multiple boot camps. And what you learn about boot camps is when you're in the suck with someone and you look to your right and left and you see your brother and your sister in that suck with you, you're going to develop a very, very strong relationship with that person. When you find yourself showering with 20, 40, 30, 50, 60 men, it's very awkward for the first week or two or three, and then before you know it, you're turning your giants and facing each other, and you're just having a conversation because you build a relationship. It happens naturally, instinctively, organically. That's all about powerlifting. Everybody knows what it took to get a 400 plus bench. Everybody knows what it took to get a 500 plus squat, 600 plus plus squat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone knows what it took for you to get there. They know the sleep it took, they know the work it took. I've squatted 809 plus pounds, right? When I see a guy squat a thousand, I'm like, oh, he's done what I've done and then some. Head nod of approval, head nod of respect, rather. So I love the natural camaraderie that comes with it because it's organic, it's real, it's, it's just, it's natural, it's subsequent to, of, of what happened, of what has taken place when we get that place. That's what I love about it. Natural camaraderie, it has to happen. There are people that I have met that didn't like me based off of uh, what they feel or think or wonder. They meet me that, well, I actually don't like this guy. Of course you do, because you're aware of the fact of what it took me to get here. And you find out, wow, Zebulon actually is more of an asshole online than he's a person. I'm a much bigger asshole online, much bigger asshole. But yeah, that's why I like and dislike about it. All right, and then I know I said that was the last, but as I heard you speaking, it kind of made me think of another mm -hmm. one. So this will be the last one we'll end it. Do you think that there is a bridge in powerlifting between Maddie and non Maddie powerlifting? It's, the only reason I ask, there's a camaraderie to this, but it's just like... There are multiple bridges. Oh, okay. Multiple bridges, right? There's a bridge between Natty and Unat. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes that bridge is burned. There's a bridge between that natty and unnatty. There's a bridge between uh, wrapped and sleeved. There's a bridge between okay. sleeved and equipped. Mm -hmm. There's so many forms, right? Between sumo and, and conventional, there are bridges. But that bridge is um, made, uh, that bridge is either used and, and uh, people extend olive branches and they treat each other equally. And some of the bridge doesn't exist at all when things happen. And what that thing is, it is the elites. When people, when there's a group of people that total a lot of weight or that do a lot of shit that, that are very, very strong, that bridge doesn't exist. I'm going to come to your island. You're going to come to mine. Why? Because in the, the day, we just, we are both or all 10 of us, all 20 of us are the best of the best of the best. So whether or not you like a person because they're natty or not natty, what you'll find is the best of the best don't care that much. They might care in the little corners and say something, but at the end of the day, when there's a person doing things that you haven't done or that you have done, there's a nod of respect that is given. Um, I think we touched on this before, but you told me earlier, maybe yesterday, when I told you I was going to do, you said you were going to ask this question, and maybe I, 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 already touched, I know I already touched on it. It was the question of um, either what got you into power, thing, or maybe what's growing up, whatever the case may be. And the answer to sports is no. I played football in college for like six months because I was big, and the coach was like, hey, look, you, play. I was like, sure, coach. I suck, and I did suck. Um, but powerlifting revealed itself to me, man. It's like the sumo versus convention. I, I see you fucking post some sumo shit the other day. And I don't know if you did it or didn't do it, but I'll tell you this. Sumo is something, and this is why I feel about powerlifting and sumo as a whole. Powerlifting, as I said already multiple times, it is a training. It's mm -hmm. a microcosm of life. I asked you, what do you want to gain? What do you want to create? What do you want to do? You say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'll take mine and I'm fucking I knew number before I ever started path. I know I'm an 800 pound deadlift. Mm. I know I'm an 800 pound dead squat. The reason those numbers increased, first was 700 and 700. The reason those numbers increased is because I saw that I was able to get to these things. Once you accomplish the things you tell yourself you're wanting to accomplish, you want to accomplish more. Pretty nuts, right? But this is a microcosm of life training. Training is simply this. Training is faith. Training is faith partnered with work. As the Bible says, faith without, work, faith without works is dead. And when you see, training is simply the belief in something you cannot yet see. Either a person says, I want to look like this in X amount of weeks or months. I want to be this strong amount of X amount of weeks or months. I want to be like this, look like this, or move like this. Training is faith um, in practicality. It's, it's literally faith used and implemented. It's you saying, I believe in what I cannot yet see. That carries over into life as a whole. So no sport got me into powerlifting. I've always loved to lift. I'm 29 years old. I've been since I was 16, 13. So 16 years into this shit. Um, I got to power relatively late when I was 27. So that's what got me into it. That's what interests me about it because I understand training itself, whether it's for power and bodybuilding or just because of general fitness, um, it, is, it, 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 is a, it is a constant ability to get better. As we get older, just fighting by the time. We want to be the 60 of the pussy. You're 60? Holy shit. You're still fighting. You may never squat 600 or get to 700 that's when you're 60. But you're doing things that, whether it's a, a physique, whether it's health-wise, oh, you're 60, you still move like that, you run like that, you act like that, you feel like this, you look like that. You're still, you're still better yourself. So it's a, it's, it's literally a, like I said, a microcosm of what life is. And when you look outside of a person's ability to train and how, outside of how they train, usually their life resembles in some way, shape, or form how they train. They have a belief system, a faith-based uh, uh, psychology in some regard, so or a certain mindset. So that's why I train. That's why that's the that's what got me to train. It is the entire idea that I can build whatever I want to build physically. And understand, this is the hardest thing to create. Creating a jack strong body, in my opinion, is harder than becoming a millionaire. It's harder than becoming financially independent, and stable. And people say, well, how come so many people that are in shape are not this way? Well, because they choose not to implement. The, 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 the rule of discipline is universal. Discipline is universal. What it takes you to go from shit to the shit, what, takes, what it takes you to go from good to best is the same thing it's going to take you to go from poor to successful. It's the same it's going to take you to go from a one-bedroom apartment to a two-story house. It's the same principle. It's discipline. 
right? It is, it is, it is, it is a delayed gratification. It's understanding that I want so badly to go and bench 500 pounds, but you know, good and damn well, you're not going to put 500 pounds on your chest now and just destroy yourself. It's delayed gratification. Understanding what I want in the future is not yet here, but I'm going to do the work to get there. So that's how training is dope for me. I got you. So with that being said, in closing, um, thank you for uh, talking with me on this channel. Thank you for identifying some of the obstacles. Like I said, uh, it is hard for me to retain certain things, but they're, they're, and I'm pretty sure you know this, but there's definitely a level of, of respect in there. Um, with your future, um, and I'm pretty sure even if you, when you do give us that decade of hell, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna do, I don't, I don't foresee with, with what you're doing, I don't foresee you hanging a pile with me ever. But other than that, um, that's all I have for my channel. Again, in the future, Allow me to bring you back because, again, I already know off the muscle there's more accolades that you're going to mm -hmm. attain, and I want to address those on my channel. I will say this. Uh, I will get better at this channel. There's more things I'm trying to do yeah. for it. The next time I bring you back, it will not be in this type of setting. It'll I don't be, care where it's at. It'll be in a much better setting. I don't setting. care where it's at, man. Mm -hmm. Look, dude, I think it's um, no one. No one wants to eat with you when there's nothing on the table. And when there's very few things mm. on the table, people say, ah, I'll come when you're in there when there's more on the table. When the table gets bigger and it becomes more substantive, they may not be invited to that table anymore. You, did, you didn't starve with me, so you cannot feast with me. Mm. Right? Everyone will come when the allure is there. The people that come when there is no allure, when there are hundreds of followers and not thousands, there are thousands of followers, not millions. There are millions of followers, not tens of millions, twenty millions. I don't give a fuck where a person. I talk to everyone. I deal with everyone because at the end of the day, the greatest thing we, our greatest fucking superpower that God has instilled in us is not in our ability to squat, bench, or deadlift, but in our empathy and our understanding that we are all in this shit together. And how you deal with a person means everything. How you look. I don't. I really do not put a lot of uh, a thought into how. A guy or girl deals with a person they have dated or did date or married to. I don't like this person. I feel like shit. I don't put a lot of thought into that. Why? Domestic issues are very different. Y'all live in the house together. Y'all want to treat each other a certain way depending on how y'all dealt with each other in that relationship or whatever the case may be or what y'all dealt with. How you deal with a, boy, a little kid, the grandmother, the overweight girl, the underweight guy or girl, how you deal with them is how I see you and how I respect you and how I deal with you. That's important. I don't give a fuck where your channel is. I don't give a fuck where we're doing a career. If I'm in the area, I'm going to do it because it takes nothing at all out of my day to do it. So that's it. God bless you, brother. Appreciate you. And we are out.